We bless you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We bless you, O Lord of heaven and earth. Heaven. and seasons. Thank you for what happened in 2023. Thank you that we survived. Thank you that we are now in 2024. And thank you for your wind that is already blowing. Oh, Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, as we gather together at your table, Father, we pray that you will do something new in our lives. Tonight, Father, in your miraculous way, heal again, set free again, glorify your name again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Well, shake hands with one or two people you haven't seen this year and say, Happy New Year. God bless you. Happy New Year to all of you. Glory be to God. John chapter 21. John 21 from verse 15 to 19. John 21 from verse 15 to 19. 
So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou guarded thyself, and walks whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall guard thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This faith is signified by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. If you read the story from Verse 1. You will notice that uh, Peter said to some people around him, he said, I go fishing. And the other said, Who will go with you? And the Bible said, They toiled all night and they caught nothing. Then when it was morning, they saw somebody walking on the other side of the lake. And he called out to them and said, children, have ye any meat? And they said, no. And he said, okay, cast your net towards your right. And they did, and they caught a lot of fish. How then they realized that's not an ordinary person calling. And John, the beloved, said, Ah, is the Lord. And the Bible said that Peter jumped out of the boat and ran towards the Lord Jesus Christ. When they finally arrived, uh, the Lord said to them, Come and eat. And they saw that there was already fish cooking and by the other side, they didn't see any nets, they didn't see uh, any means by which the fish was caught. And they didn't ask questions. They sat down to eat. That's when we now come to verse 15, where we pick the story. After they have dined, God said to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these people? Oh, Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, okay, feed my lamb. Then I asked him the second time, Simon Dawson, of, uh, do you love me? This time around, the Lord didn't say more than this. He said, I thought I love you. And the Lord said to him, the third time, do you love me? He said, ah, I think I understand now. I know you are referring me to something. 
you know all things I might have failed you in the past but I love you for some of us here today this is going to be a new dawn And we are gathered together for a very, very special meal. A meal to erase all our past failures. Because you know very well in Matthew 26, from verse 69 to 75 Matthew 26 69 to 75 Peter denied three times that he knew Jesus he denied him thrice and so the Lord gave him an opportunity To say with his same mouth that denied him, I love you. That's why I asked him three times. By the time he was asking the third time, Peter knew, yeah, I know you, you are referring to my failures. I failed you three times. I repented because he did. He wept bitterly. You know all things. You know why I failed. But I still love you. Some of us failed in 2023. Some of us failed badly in 2023. But we were very sorry and by the special grace of God we are here tonight because the almighty God in his infinite mercy has decided not to allow any carryover and believing God for you that this will be a new beginning. Yeah. But not only is God asking us to come and dine, and I'm sure you understand that the food they ate that day was prepared by the Lord Jesus Himself. They didn't do any cooking. He caught the fish, whatever fish, whatever method he used to prepare the meal. Just like the Holy Communion, we have no contribution towards it. The bread is symbolizing the body of Christ. The wine is symbolizing his blood. We come into a meal to erase the past. But, to bring a new commissioning because each time Peter said I love you God gave him an assignment feed my lamb feed my sheep feed my sheep Feed my lamb. He's saying, don't just win souls, follow them up. Newborn Christians, newborn again Christians, are like babes. That's what the Bible calls them. 
And he expects somebody to look after them until they become established. He's expecting every one of us to be in the follow-up team in all our churches. He said, feed my lamb. Take care of those who have just been born again. So don't just eat and drink tonight. Eat and drink with a determination. That this year, like never before, not only will you win souls, you will follow them up until they become established. And then he said, don't just feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Even those who are already grown in the Lord, they need your help. They need your fellowship. They need your encouragement. So that they won't backslide. Even those who are standing, the Bible says they should take heed lest they fall. And in a time of hardship, time when things are hot, it takes brothers and sisters helping one another to survive. He told Peter, Feed my sheep. He even said, Feed my sheep twice. That means there are two categories of sheep. There are those who are matured Christians, and there are those who are more matured than the matured. It's not only expecting you to take care of the matured Christians. It's expecting you to lift up the hands of the ministers. This year, we are beginning anew. In the areas where we have failed in the past, Failed to take care of new converts, failed to take care of members of the congregation who you could even call adults, failed to take care of the ministers of God. Because the Bible made it clear those who feed you spiritually, you should make sure you take care of them materially. The Lord is saying, no carryover, but start afresh. Feed my lamb, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And it's not only that. It's a meal that is supposed to bring you into a closer relationship with God. Because the Lord ended up by saying to Peter, follow me. Some of us are already following him, but he's calling for a closer relationship. God is expecting you this year to follow him more intimately. He expects you to be much closer to him than you have ever been. When you read the story in First Kings chapter 18, as to the story of what happened on Mount Carmel, Elijah was already on the mountain top, on the top on mountain on Mount Carmel, when he called down fire from heaven. But when he said, "I've had the sound of abundance of rain." The Bible said, a climb higher still.
Maybe last year you were praying and fire was falling. This year God wants you to pray and there will be showers of blessing. But if you want to do that, you have to climb higher still. You have to get closer to him. And not only that, it was a meal that was to restore destiny. The meal you are about to partake of tonight is to restore your destiny. God has a purpose for your life. And many of us, because of one thing or the other, because of all the diversions of life, we are no longer where we ought to be according to God's plan for our lives. But I'm believing God for all of you tonight. That as you partake of this very special meal, you'll be on your way back to your destiny. I once gave an illustration of someone who is heading, shall we say, towards a lorry. For example, Ilori, for those of you who are not Nigerians listening to me, Ilori is towards the north if you are going from Lagos. And the fellow gets to the junction, the Abekuta Shagamu junction, that's on the way. And instead of going further, Going towards Ibadan and then from Ibadan towards Ilori and so on. For one thing or the for one reason or the other, was sidetracked and he branched at the junction to the right. And at the time when he should be in Ibadan, he found himself in Ijebodi. That's towards the east. When he realizes, oh, I'm going the wrong direction. What he has to do is retrace his steps, come back to that junction where he veered off, and now begin to go in the right direction. I don't know how many of us have already veered off. But I'm praying that by the time you finish the meal tonight, God will open your eyes and will show you where you veered up and bring you back to the where to the point where you made a mistake so that you cannot begin to go in the direction of your destiny. But most importantly, most importantly. It wasn't long after this meal that Peter had with the Lord Jesus Christ that we had what happened on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Lord asked me to tell someone, no matter how far gone you are, if you return to him tonight, he will speed your way of recovery. When you look at your Bible, you will discover that John chapter 21 is the last chapter in the book of John. 
And the book that followed is the Acts of the Apostles. It wasn't long after the story we are talking about that we come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 from verse 1. You can read the the whole of Acts chapter 2. It wasn't long after Peter ate this meal that the day of Pentecost came. And on the day of Pentecost, the wind blew. And by the time the wind blew, it blew Peter all the way to the top. It was a meal before the wind began to blow. This year the Lord has told us the wind is already blowing. After tonight's meal, it will blow somebody all the way to the top. I'm sure if you are the one, your amen will be louder. Tonight's meal is not an ordinary Holy Communion meal. You say, oh, daddy, that's what you always say. Mm, I know. But this one is different. It's a meal that is going to precede the blowing of the wind for someone. You eat this meal, what they lay, the wind will blow in your favor. And very soon you'll be at a height you never thought you can ever reach. That's why I'm appealing to you, don't eat this meal on what they lay. No when the wind blows. It can blow in favor. It can blow contrary. So if you are not a true child of the living God, if you are not sure of your salvation, I appeal to you right now, come. Come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. This is a new dawn. This is a new beginning. If you are a backslider, Please come. The Lord is ready to help your return. I'm going to count from one to five. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you really mean business, come. If you are backsliding and you really want to be restored, come. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. It's a new dawn, a new day, a new beginning, not just of a new year, but concerning your destiny. Hurry up. Hurry up. Four. Five. 
coming through Jesus. Now those of you who are already in front and those of you who are on the way, cry to the Almighty God. Ask Him to have mercy on you. Ask Him to save your soul. Ask Him to forgive all your sins. Ask Him to take over your life from now on and give you a brand new beginning. Tell Him you are saying bye-bye to a life of sin. And from now on you want to serve Him. You want to do His will. And then let the rest of us stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. Pray that God will give them a brand new beginning. Please intercede for them. Intercede for them. Those of you on the way, hurry up now. Because I want to pray for salvation. I want to pray for God to restore backslide us to himself. Thank you, Father. Just keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. I want to thank you for your goodness. I want to thank you for your mercy. I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for all those who heard your word this evening and have decided to surrender their lives to you. I want to thank you for all backsliders that have decided to come back home. Father, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As many as have come to you, Lord, Father, please receive them. Forgive all their sins. Let your blood wash them clean. Save their souls and write their names in the book of life. Give them a brand new beginning. From now, let them serve you only. And when they pray, please answer them by fire. Thank you, Almighty God. And I pray that all backsliders will be fully restored and that they will never backslide again. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, those of you in front, I want to rejoice with you. I want to assure you that from now on, by God's grace, I'll be praying for you. So I need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. If you turn to your left, you will see somebody carrying a placard. Please follow him. He will take you to where some pastors are waiting. He will collect the information I need, and they bring you back very quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And if we are clapping for Jesus, let's do it as if we really mean it. Let's really clap. Don't be stingy with praising God this year. Make sure when you clap, you really clap. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty. Thank you, Almighty. Come on, clap a little more. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Glory be to God. Amen. So when you take the bread... Tonight, you're going to thank the Almighty God that in His infinite mercy He has decided that you have not brought any carryover to the new year. So you, you will praise Him. You will 
magnify his holy name as we eat the bread. When it comes to the wine, we're going to be crying unto him that the wind that is already blowing we blow in our favor. So as usual, when they serve you the wine, you hold it till we are all served. But as soon as I give the go ahead now, you can eat the bread and continue to thank him for restoration. The Lord Jesus, the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So you eat and continue to thank him for restoration.
have not been served bread wave your hand and shout hallelujah good if you have not been served wine wave your hand and shout hallelujah oh in the old auditorium what's happening
So let's, let's have one more song. They said they have not been served wine. There's few of them in the old auditorium. Let's do something about that very quickly. One more song. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Sing and sorrow, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus set me free from I'm no bound to sing, no bound to death. Stand, please. When you drink the wine tonight, your prayer is that the wind of God will blow in your favor. Make sure you pray that prayer with all your heart. After the same manner, also, he took the cup when he has stopped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. These two years as soft as they drink it in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father. Amen. 
kind of discern. And of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Let your wind blow in my favor. From now on, Lord. Let your wind blow speedily, continuously, vigorously, in my favor. From now on, let your wind blow tremendously. In my favor. This year, in the way of destruction and great trouble, every plan of the enemy. We can lead to greater highs, far, far higher than I can ever dream possible. What's your wind up here? In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. So shall it be in Jesus' name. So shall it be in Jesus' name. So name. Amen. Let me sit there for a while, pass the cups to the aisles, and then let's take our offering to say thank you for the Lord, to the Lord for forgiving our past, for a new beginning, towards the restoration of our destiny. Let's thank him because the wind is already blowing And it's going to blow in our favor As soon as you've taken your offering You just dance to the nearest basket Drop it Rejoice with as many people as possible Because this is a new beginning Over to you band
rock of ages the unchangeable changer we worship you thank you for the mysteries of the holy communion thank you that every day you are showing us greater and deeper things thank you for the opportunity that we could be partakers Father, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, my God, I pray to all who have partaken of this particular Holy Communion, your wind that is already blowing will blow in their favor. I'm asking that the wind will blow them to heights they can't dream possible. Let your wind blow mightily in their favor. And clear their way of every obstruction in Jesus' name. Please receive their thanksgiving offering. Bless it, Lord. Use it for your glory. And I pray, Lord, that your wind will blow prosperity into their lives. Lord, even by this time of tomorrow, let everyone here have a testimony. 
In Jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen uh, I want an hallelujah that will sound as if the wind is already blowing in your favor <laughs> <laughs>